Welcome to the Soundbridge Music Monthly Featured Artist Interview. In this series, we get to know Front Range artists who not only shape the local music scene, but who joined with Soundbridge Music and its mission to use the power of music to improve the lives of individuals and bring people together. This month, we are featuring a very special event, bringing together not just the Soundbridge Music Featured Artist of the Month, Mur de Marmion, but a, but a very special organization, the In-Between of Longmont. We are very happy to have both Mur with us today, as well as Laura Tetta from the In-Between Longmont to tell us a bit about the organization, the upcoming benefit, and of course, Mur's music. So uh, tell us a little bit about In-Between Longmont and uh, some of what your organization does in the community. Okay, thank you. Um, the In-Between of Longmont is a supportive housing and services agency. So we provide um, affordable housing along with case management services and life skills classes to help people build towards a more stable future. Um, there's about four components of our program and the largest of that is the transitional housing program. We have 72 units of housing in Longmont and 50 of those are used for the transitional program which is time limited housing where residents pay up to 30 percent of their income mm -hmm. and uh, can stay with us for about up to 24 months and take those life skills classes and get personalized case management services uh, working with 14 different human services agencies that refer those clients to us and take care of their case management while they're living with us. Uh, we have about eight units of permanent supportive housing, which is for the elderly and disabled, and they can live with us as long as they like. They're living on very low fixed incomes, and this provides them housing with access to services nearby and without the stress of having to worry about where they're going to live. Um, and we have up to nine units of student incentive programs, so at-risk youth who find themselves in the unfortunate situation of being homeless can live with us rent-free as long as they're staying in school and attending school and working towards their graduation. And those students do very, very well in our program. And then we have four units of emergency housing in collaboration with HOPE and the Hour Center um, for people who have been identified in a crisis. Uh, and they can stay with us until we can figure out where, where the best situation is from, for them. Um, we served 238 individuals last year, and 100 of those people were children. So we serve a lot of families. We have four buildings here in Longmont, and purchased one of them in 2012 so that we could house up to 17 more families because the affordable housing crisis was beginning to crescendo, and we were finding more and more families coming to us for help. And so um, that's, that was a really um, fortuitous thing for us to buy in 2012 because then the, the flood hit in 2013, which exacerbated the flood, uh, the uh, housing crisis that we have here in Boulder County. Um, you know, we're serving people who are just having a hard time. Uh, they can't afford both basic needs and housing and start facing evictions. And then they come to us through those other agencies. Um, we're proud to say that 92% of the people who graduated from our program last year found stable housing in the mm -hmm. community, and that's amazing in this, this uh, very expensive place to live. Uh, most of the people that live with us are earning less than 30% of area median income. And just to give you an example, um, area median income for a family of four here is about $98,400. That's a lot of money, and so um, it's very difficult for people in our community, and so we're just happy to be a crucial resource here for people and are helping our community become stronger. So, Mur, how did you become involved with In Between? Mm -hmm. I've been in Longmont since 2002, and in 2012, I had an opportunity to travel down to the southeastern states, Florida, Georgia, South Carolina for a healing music project. And I unfortunately got into some really toxic situations. And when I came back here, I came back to heal in 2016. It's always been my heart home and this is where I come to recharge. And I was in a really 
fragile state. I had some PTSD that was activated and I wasn't in a place where I could really work full time. Mm -hmm. And so when I came back, um, everything had changed housing wise. Like my little studio apartment had gone from $650 to $1,250. Yeah. And I spent a lot of bouncing around, couch surfing, did a lot of pet sitting. I had a lot of um, angel friends who helped me out. Um, but there were times when I also stayed in my car. Mm -hmm. And it was really, um, in the summer it wasn't a big deal because we have the, the fairgrounds, campground, so it was pleasant. Mm -hmm. um, but in the winter it was a different story. And in October of this year, I was in um, the King Supers parking lot on Hover, and they had a raid. Oh, the police came through with the flashlights and rapping on the windows, and it was pretty terrifying. It was about 11.30 at night. And what the policewoman told me was that the mayor at the time did not want homeless people in Longmont anymore, and they were ousting them. And so several people were arrested, from what I understood. Luckily, I was not. Um, but that really made a huge impression on me. Um, and I knew some other individuals who were in this same situation that weren't able to afford housing. And I had been involved at the Hour Center and they had told me about the in-between. And so when I was thinking about um, what I want, I wanted to do something for the community for my, for my 60th birthday. Mm -hmm. And I decided to do the fundraiser for the in-between and for SoundBridge. Yeah. So uh, tell us about this benefit coming up on February 25th. It's going to be, um, well, I'm a member of the Left Hand Artist Group, mm -hmm. and that's how I connected with SoundBridge, too. So what I wanted to do is I wanted to have an art auction and music mm -hmm. and, you know, just a place where people could come and, and party and have a good time and support the community. And so I really had a greater response than what I was anticipating. Mm -hmm. We have... We have probably seven or eight artists who are donating art for the silent auction. And then um, one of our members told us about these 10 doors or 15 doors that are repurposed interior doors. And he said, hey, can somebody, does anybody feel like, uh, like painting these and auctioning them off? And then it was open door and then it was the doors. And so it just kind of evolved organically. Mm -hmm. And so now we have probably about 10 or 12 artists who are painting doors for auction. How can, how can people make a difference to help address issues facing working homeless? And how can people get involved? Well, we're very excited about this event. So <laughs> I would first and foremost say come out and uh, celebrate with us yeah. because uh, we're looking forward to uh, increasing awareness of what we're doing and uh, learning more about what Murr is having to offer and all the left-hand artists and the musicians who will be there. It's wonderful when people from the community put together events like this um, to help raise awareness of the homelessness issue. It's really not just the chronically homeless. The people we're serving are the people who are situationally homeless, mm -hmm. like Murr was, mm -hmm. um, or episodically homeless. So um, I would say just uh, really helping yourself understand what the issue is around affordable housing and the crisis it's causing in our community and understanding that when affordable housing is built in our community um, those are people who are teaching your children and they're uh, bagging your groceries in the grocery store they're people that are part of this community and we need them here mm -hmm. so um, i think that that's a really important piece for people to understand and then financial support, of course, is mm -hmm. something that we always need. About um, 50 to 60 percent of our budget is paid for by the rents that our residents pay. Mm -hmm. uh, but we rely on this community so that we can continue to help people. 
Um, we're, we're very excited to feature your music this month. Um, tell us a little bit about your music. Well, I grew up in a really musical family. Um, my grandfather, whom I never met, was a big band singer with several big bands, and um, he passed before I was born. But he really influenced my mom, and she studied music, and then we subsequently, my brother and sister and I, we all studied music. We studied piano and guitar and drums and voice, and I didn't really ever do much with it after high school. I auditioned for Up With People, and was accepted and then I decided it's not what I wanted to do so I went on to lead a really mainstream life um, until probably 2001. At that time I started studying energy. I started energy work, some several modalities and then I went to a um, an event in Mount Shasta and I met a musician by the name of Rand, uh, Randy Masters who was also a teacher, a professor of music at San Jose State. Mm -hmm. And he was taking the frequencies of planets and star systems and sacred sites, and he was creating tuning forks. Hmm. And he played this one tuning fork, and I was gone for like 30 minutes. I was just like in a different space, and I saw what music does to people on a cellular level. I just, I, I, I can't explain how this happened, but it did. And when I came back, and I came back to Longmont, it's like, I'm supposed to sing again. Yeah. I'm supposed to play the bowls, indigenous music, didgeridoo, drum, whatever, vocalize. And so that's what I started doing. Mm -hmm. um, it's evolved over the years. It's more meditative for individuals to help find a deeper space of inner peace mm -hmm. and calm and awareness. It's also about connecting to a place within you that can help your physical body and your emotional body heal. So what inspired you to become a part of Sandbridge? I met Trish and Wes at one of the very first Left Hand Artist Group meetings. Mm -hmm. And actually, she came up to me and said, I want you to be part of our group. And I'm like, yeah, that would be a really oh. good, at least that's what I remember. <laughs> but yeah, it's right, exactly the intention and focus of what I do. So is there anything else you'd like to tell people or, or let them know? I would really, really, really appreciate huge support from the community for this event because it's going to benefit the in-between of Longmont, but also Soundbridge music and um, bring more musicians on board that are uh, focusing their music to make a difference mm -hmm. in the community and in the world at large. And uh, it's, it's exciting. Well, thank you both so much for sitting down and taking the time to talk to us and also for your wonderful efforts in, in this community. Remember to stop by The Open Door on Sunday, February 25th from 2 to 6 to support our neighbors dealing with homelessness, to support Sandbridge music, and to have a fantastic time. Thanks for watching, and be sure to check back in March for our featured artist of the month, The Cat Calls. If you're interested in learning more about Sandbridge music and becoming a part of Music for Change, check us out at www.soundbridgemusic.org.